Hello everyone, my name is Raphael Walter and a few months back I showed you here uh, how to do uh, an extraction from an ECC system or S4 system into Google BigQuery using SAP Data Intelligence. Uh, but actually, uh, as you know, yeah, after the announcement on March the 8th of SAP Data Sphere, actually there are some features of Data Intelligence, SAP Data Intelligence that were embedded into SAP Data Sphere. Um, transforming data warehouse cloud into SAP data sphere. One of these features is the replication flow. And uh, for S4 systems, it's pretty straightforward. You just connect to an S4 system and you can use a feature called replication flow and you can do initial load or uh, initial and delta load from an S4 system. It's very straightforward. And you can go and look at this on online. You'll find many videos. But actually, uh, if your source system is an ECC system, then it's a little bit more tricky. And I had a few customers asking me exactly that. How could the load data coming from an ECC system using the replication flows coming from a SAP data sphere and uh, how they could load that data into? For now, the target is just for example, SAP Datasphere itself could be an SAP HANA, but in the future there'll be other targets just like SAP Google Cloud Storage or Google BigQuery. So basically, I wanted to make this video to explain how you could do this. So what you'll need is all this information that is available here in Systems Administration and then Data Source Configuration. You'll need the sub-account, uh, your region host and the sub-account user and of course the password of that. And, and for that, you'll also need uh, to install the SAP Cloud Connector on your on-premise system. Uh, you'll need to have this as a VPN between your cloud system, this P Data Sphere, and your ECC system. And in this case, we'll also be using the SLT system, which can also be called the DEMIS. Uh, DEMIS add-on is something that enables you also to use SLP functions, and you can add this add-on on top of your ECC system, or it could be on a different box. And uh, so then you add your SAP Cloud Connector. You also will need the SAP Analytics Cloud Agent, and you will also need to install the SAP Java connect, uh, connector. So if we go into the SAP Cloud connector, here you need to create a sub account. So you add a sub account, you use the region that I just showed you, the sub account uh, ID, a display name that you'll be using, the sub account user and your sub account uh, user password. And then you give it a location ID that you'll be using uh, to identify your SAP Cloud connector inside of SAP uh, Datasphere. So once it is set, then you will connect it and you'll see here I have my connection to my data sphere uh, that is done. The location ID is DEMIS2018. And then once it is done, I can go into my cloud to on-premise system. I select the sub account, which is the data sphere because uh, this is the name that I give it. And then I have the uh, my virtual uh, internal uh, virtual internal systems. And I have one for my SAP Analytics Cloud Agent and one for my ECC6 EHP8 system that has also the SLT system. Okay, so then you'll need to uh, add all of these naming policies for the resources, and this is in the help. So I won't be telling you this, but you can copy this here. You have the different prefix and exact names, etc. Then for the SAP Analytics Cloud Agent, you need to add this URL path, and then basically you're good to go. You've set up your SAP. Uh, um, cloud connector correctly to use to be used as a VPN between your uh, cloud and your on-premise systems. So if we go back into the administration uh, part of Datasphere, here you have all this information, and here you have the specific uh, location that I just used with my SAP Analytics Cloud agent. Okay, so here I see uh, my agent. Uh, which is the virtual uh, that I use, the virtual name that I given in the SAP Cloud Connector, the port, the username, and the password by default is going to be agent agent. Okay, and then you, of course you need to uh, to do the connection because you want to be able to do replication flows. So I will create a connection here, which is my Dimis 2018. So just to show you what is in there, I have set. Uh, the application server with a RFC connection. So this is the ECC system, the ECC system that I've set in my SAP Cloud connector, the system number, the, I, uh, the client. Then I use the SAP Cloud connector. I 
put here all the information of my SubCloud connector uh, with the allocation ID that I've just set inside of the SubCloud connector and inside of the systems uh, administration over there. I have my username and the password. And as you see, I have now my data flows and replication flows that are enabled. I could also have used the data provisioning agent to enable remote tables, but I don't need it in this demonstration, so I didn't do it. Now, we need to do a few things on the SLT system. So if I go into my SLT system or the Daemon system, here, uh, I'm first, I need to define my ECC uh, system. And for that, I'll go into transaction SM59. Oops. Sorry. Okay. And then in my transaction SM69, I have my ABAC connection. And one of these connections is here, ECC EHP8. I'll just show it to you. I have technical settings, administration, etc., and my logon security with the user and password. And once this is done, this is what it's going to be using inside of the uh, LTRC cockpit. So this is, oh, <laughs> looks like I'm not really successful in typing transactions today. Okay, so I have here my transaction uh, mass transfer ID and a configuration name. Just to show you how to configure this, uh, you will go here, give it a name, test. Uh, you don't need this. The RFC connection is the one that we've just set up inside of SM57, which is ECC HP8 connection. So I select this. I going, I'm going to select this and that, and let's check this. And then I go into the next. And here, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You go into other, and for the scenario, you're going to be using SAP Data Intelligence Replication Management Service. As I said, this is a feature coming from Data Intelligence that was embedded inside of Datasphere. And basically, then you're good to go. So here, performance optimized, you specify the number of jobs, initial load, etc. You want it to be real time or not. And then you review, you create, and that's it. Okay, so I don't want to do this because I've already done this. And here, basically, you don't have to do anything else because it's on the data sphere side that you will define the tables, the replication flow that you want to be replicating. Okay, you don't need to go into the match transfer ID and to add anything. Basically, you've set the RFC connection for the source system and the target system, and that's all you need to do. Okay, basically, here if we go into the administration, I have here my connection to the source, and for the connection to target, it says RFC connection to none, but actually you saw that I said that this was going to be called by data intelligence, and this is how we're going to connect our system into this. And as you can see, I've already done this exercise, but I have here my Mara table, and it's actually with initial load, now replication, and it was completed. So now if we go back into uh, the, the data builder, I'm going to create a new replication flow. So if you create a new replication flow, uh, you go into here, you select your source connection, which is your uh, system that you've connected, the connection that we've created. The source connect container, you're going to see all the different uh, capabilities that you have connecting to an ECC system. But what's interesting is you have the SLT system and you'll see the mass transfer ID of your SLT system, which is 007. Okay. Then once you select this, you just add the source object. And here I said Mara, it could be VBAP, VBAP, but let's say for the sake of this demonstration, I'll go back again and select Mara. I'll go into this, I'll go into next. I'll select this, I'll add the selection. So it's fetching all the details of this table. So it's building uh, getting all the information and I can select my target connection. In this case, I'm connecting, I'm, I'm loading my data into Datasphere. As I said, there will be more connections available coming in the end of the year. And here you have your projections if you wanted to do some kind of uh, filtering uh, if you want it. And then you have the load type, which is could be initial load or initial delta. You can truncate, truncate your table if you wanted to uh, do an initial every time. Then you save you deploy and you run. I've already done this, so basically I don't need to do it. 
and uh, I'm going to discard. And once you have it running, you go into the data integration monitor, you go into the flow monitor, and you see here your ECC HP8 Mara running. And I just run it today. And I see when it was completed. Actually, there is also, if it's a big table like Mara, small tables are okay, but if it's a big table, you'll need to partition your table. Otherwise, as you can see, it will fail. But, uh, but you need to, to create partitions on your table uh, so that uh, it can deal with, uh, with the huge side of this table. And once this is done, this could be up and running. And uh, so it took me uh, like 16 minutes, 17 minutes nearly to load the table into Datasphere, all the table from the material number. And if we go into the table, you see automatically it created the table Mara. I can go into this table, I can view this table, and I can view the actual data inside of this table. Okay, so perfect. So now, uh, as you can see, there are a few steps that need, and I'll, I'll just go back to them. So first, you need to go into administration. You need to have all this information about your account, uh, your sub account, that's easy. The region host, of course. The sub account user is a little bit more tricky. You'll need to get information and the password. And then you'll need to set your on-premise data source with the South Cloud connector and you give it a location and a connection to the SCP Analytics Cloud agent that I've just said. Then you go into the, uh, your on-premise system, you have the SAP Cloud connector installed, you define your sub account here, and then on your cloud to on-premise, you need to define your uh, connection to your uh, ECC system, which is actually in my case, the Demis add-on with the SLT system, the SAP Analytics Cloud Agent with the virtual name that you've given to both, and you need to set all of these uh, resources uh, that you need to, to add, and this is again, once in the help, and once this is done, please remember always to use the location ID that you've set here. And then you use the same location ID. You go into the connection. I'm repeating myself, but it's just so that you know. And you go into the connection. You create a connection exactly with this uh, cloud connector and the virtual host. And then you just can start using this uh, to replicate the data coming from the ECC system on-premise into Datasphere. Okay, I hope this was helpful, useful, sorry. Uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, the best to you. And don't hesitate to leave a comment if you need any more information. I have a question about this. Thank you.